Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. This week we are looking at some spinning. So put your feet up, grab a brew and let's get started. Welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. So we're talking spinning today um, and we're actually going to be trying to spin some yarn to a specific yarn weight. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with yarn, because you may just be popping across to this video for the first time looking to dabble in some knitting and spinning and what have you, yarn weight is not the number of grams or ounces or whatever that you've got of yarn, it's the thickness of the yarn. Um, so normally when I'm spinning I spin to what would have typically been called in the UK a four ply weight um, but the US term is fingering um, it can also be referred to as sock weight yarn uh, so quite a thin yarn, not quite lace weight yarn but not sort of the big chunky yarns um, that's my default um, weight uh, but today I'm actually going to be trying to spin for DK weight I'm obviously not going to get the whole yarn spun in this video because I spin on a drop spindle and not a spinning wheel. So it uh, it takes me a little while to get a skein done, but that's okay because I enjoy the process. So I have some fibre here that I'm going to be using and I haven't quite decided which spindle I'm going to use. Um, I have my heavier plying spindle, which I will be using to start the yarn off if I use the Turkish spindle, which is this one. If I decide to use the Jalagan, which is this one, then I will need to get some leader yarn on there. Uh, I could actually use the same fibre if I get it started with this as well. Uh, but previously I've used a pre-spun bit of leader yarn on the Jalagan. So the fibre that I am spinning up today I have had this in my stash for quite some time. I actually won this in the Spin and Make Along a couple of years ago. Uh, so that was run by Mina of Knitting Expat and Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns. Um, and this is 200 grams of John Arban Harvest Hues and it's in the Juniper colourway. Now what I'm thinking is actually to do a sweater spin in a DK weight. Um, hopefully in a DK weight. I'll finalise which pattern I'm using once I know what weight yarn I'm getting. Um, but yeah, my, I normally spin to, to sort of fingering sportish weight, so it's just slightly thicker is what I'm going for. And once I've spun up the first skein of this, because this should make me 200 gram skeins, um, then I'll know what yardage I'm getting for that weight of fibre, and I can work out how much more fibre I need to get. Um, the Harvest Hues range is a lovely range um, of these kind of blended colours. They've got a few different greens in there, so I'm thinking maybe a gradient of greens, um, maybe some contrast colours in there, uh, but I am thinking of buying more harvest hues to make a sweater. If I was buying commercial yarn, I'd probably be looking at around five to six hundred grams for a sweater, depending on the length and the, the patterning and that kind of thing. Um, so I know I'm definitely going to need more fibre, um, but because I don't always get the same yardage, which I normally don't get anywhere near the yardage that you get in commercial yarns for the same weight, um, I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to need. So I will be doing some calculations, as I say, once I've finished the first um, skein. So let's uh, get started with sorting this fibre out, and I'll show you how, how I'm planning to work to spin this, this fibre up. And uh, we'll get going. I think I'm leaning towards the Turkish spindle, you know. Thinking that might be quite nice with this one. I do enjoy my Jalagan. Do enjoy this one. But I'm thinking because I've I've not spun so much on the Jalagan that it might be better to try a new weight on the spindle that I've used more often. I think that makes sense. See, so yeah, we're probably going to use the Turkish. If I change my mind, I'll let you know. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move the camera around. Uh, I'm going to show you my workings of how I'm planning on spinning this up and uh, we'll get some fibre prep done and get started. So I've got my high-tech graphics here for you to, to talk a little bit about uh, weight of plies to get a specific yarn weight. 
So these figures I got from Nitty.com, so they've got a Nitty Spin article for, called Spin a Substitute, uh, where they basically go into how you would go about planning to spin a specific yarn to replace a commercial yarn in a pattern. Um, so that's quite a useful article to be looking at. Um, but essentially for my purposes, because I know I'm aiming for a DK weight and I haven't settled on a pattern yet, this is my useful column. Uh, but I normally spin fingering to sport weight, so slightly between uh, fingering and DK um, is kind of my default. Um, so, assuming that I end up with a 32 wraps per inch standard baseline default single, that would, it as two ply, give me a fingering four ply weight. Uh, 26 wraps per inch would give me a two-ply DK. But I think I'm probably going to find it easier, uh, given that the three-ply wraps per inch for a DK is the same as the fingering. So here we have 32 and here we have 32. I'm thinking that might be the easier option to go for. So I'm going to be attempting to spin singles at 32 wraps per inch um, to then ply together as a three ply. Now I could do a single at 32 wraps per inch and uh, chain ply, um, which used to be referred to as Navajo ply, but I don't know if that's the best term for it because I don't know if that's where the technique originated from. So chain ply uh, would give me a three ply yarn. Um, but I think I'm going to go for a standard uh, ply three singles together three ply. Um, the texture of the yarn will be slightly different with a, a chain ply compared to a uh, more standard, well, more standard is probably not, not the right term, but the, the two plies just twisted around each other like I normally do. Um, so I'll do the same process for a three ply. it be interesting to see actually how much quicker three ply plies up because two plies always takes a lot longer than you expect. So that's my plan. I'm aiming for 32 wraps per inch, which at a two ply should give me a four fingering or four ply. Don't ask me why the English terminology is four, is four ply. I don't know. Uh, so basically a, a sock weight. Um, but at a three ply, that should give me a DK. Um, I'm not going to be overly concerned if it's slightly thicker, slightly thinner. Um, that's kind of the nature of hand spun yarn anyway. It goes a little bit thick and thin. Um, but by plying it together, that's going to even out uh, inconsistencies a bit and give a, a, a more consistent yarn overall. So that's the plan. And the way that I'm going to actually check to see if I've got the right wraps per inch on my singles is using this little gadget here. I do have a wooden one that just has the cutout for an inch and a half inch, and you wrap the yarn around and count the number of times that it's, it's wrapped, because this is an inch measurement. But this one was actually sent to me by my friend Patricia um, from the States and you can actually lie the yarn across the the grooves and uh, work out what your wraps per inch is that way. So I'm aiming for around about this line here. I'm normally between 24 and 36 um, when I spin singles so that should be quite achievable. Okay, so I've gone ahead and split the fibre into uh, half, roughly, and uh, one's like 105, the other's 102, there's like just over 200 grams in the original bump. So I'm going to put uh, one of these to one side, I'm going to work with the one for now. So um, as you can see, the fibre has a mixture of greens and blues in there, so that's going to blend together as I spin it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to split this up to prep three plies. So I'm going to need to divide it into three equal portions. So here we have 104 grams of uh, fibre. So we're going to split that into three equalish parts. So a third of 100 is 33. So we're going to be around 34, 35 grams for each ply. Okay, so I've split my fibre into three uh, plies. They're about 34, 35 grams each, um, because I had a little bit more than uh, 200 grams in total. So I split the, the 200 grams into 
halves first. I've got 100 gram bump to one side over here. That'll be dealt with later for that be my second skein. But the first skeins, 100 grams, I've split into three. Um, and now I'm splitting it down further. So each 30 odd gram bump, I've split in half. And now I'm just splitting it into uh, thinner sections so that it's easier to manage. So I will carry on doing that and uh, come back to you when I'm ready to start spinning. I'm just going to do one ply at a time in terms of prep just because it's easier for storing it. Okay, so I've got my uh, fibre that I've prepped for the first ply. I've got my second and third ply waiting up here. And my second skein waiting here as well. They're going to be put in a box later until I'm ready to spin them. Uh, but they're just to one side for the moment. Okay, so uh, let's get started. We're going to use the Turkish spindle to spin these plies. So I'm just going to take this one apart because it needs to be apart before you get started with it. Uh, now, you do need a little bit of a leader to go onto a Turkish spindle to get started. So I'm going to need a crochet hook to get that attached to the, the Turkish spindle. And I actually quite like to use my plying spindle to just get that yarn started uh, enough for me to put on the Turkish spindle. Seems like a little bit of a cheat. You can do it just rolling it on your, your leg or twisting the fibre, um, but I just find this easier. So we're just going to spin a little bit, just enough to get me started. Um, and then we'll work on the Turkish spindle. Okay, so that should be plenty to get going with, so I'm just going to butterfly it down just to manage the fibre and take that spindle off, put that to one side, and I won't need that until I start my next ply. Um, so, for the Turkish spindle we're going to put the two cross beams together, and I'm, I like to put the yarn through the hole before I put the stick in, which is where the crochet hook comes in. So I stick my crochet hook up through the hole, and I grab the fibre where it was on the hook of the plying spindle. It's not technically a plying spindle, I just refer to it as my plying spindle because that's what I generally use it for. Um, so I've now got the uh, start leader through the hole, I'm going to take my crochet hook off, put that to one side and take the stick from my Turkish spindle and put that up through the hole as well. Then I have my yarn started so I can just wrap that around the stick to begin with, and that's my leader. A little half hitch on the top, and I can continue spinning. Oops, and drop my spindle. This is why they're called drop spindles. Um, but that's okay, so I'll just uh, put my half hitch on the top. Put my fluffy ends of fibre back together again. They will just uh, spin in together. I'm not going to do too much at the moment because I want to check the weight that I'm spinning my singles at. So I'm going to take my gauge and I'm going to place it underneath uh, the fight, this ply. And yes, that's coming in at 32 wraps per inch, which is exactly what I want. Um, so I'm going to keep spinning this up and as I say, I'll come back to you when I'm ready to ply the three plies together, show you how I do that and show you the finished yarn. Um, but it's going to take me a little while to do that. So in the meantime, I hope you found this useful and interesting. Um, I put up a video um, most weekends. I aim for every weekend and I've only missed a few. So yeah, um, most weekends. Uh, so Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, once a month, it's a what I've been making in the, the previous month video. And other times it's more like this, more sort of craft specific, project specific videos. Um, occasionally it's me just waffling at the camera, but usually it's, it's more crafty based. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's the premise of the channel really. Every once in a while I might do a video on books, but generally it's crafts. Um, so, that's uh, all I've got for you today. If you like this video, obviously just give it a like. If you've managed to spin a DK yarn on a spindle, let me know. Um, what have you used it for? And uh, I will see you next time. So until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now. <laughs>